On initial evaluation of a patient with knee pain, we first inspect the patient standing with their feet about uh, shoulder widths apart, first looking at both knees, looking for any obvious deformity or swelling, as well as the alignment of the knees, looking for any varus or valgus alignment deformities. We then look to the feet for any pes planus or pes cavus, as well as watching them walk briefly, looking for any pronation or supination. As you can see with our patient, he has nice normal alignment of the knees. He has some pes planus at the feet and some mild pronation about the ankle with walking. The next part of the evaluation, we will have the patient in the supine position, first looking for any warmth or erythema of the knee, always comparing to the opposite knee as well. Then look at the quadriceps musculature and have the patient contract the quadriceps to looking for, good, for tone and any muscle atrophy. For effusion, we will milk down from the suprapatellar aspect then pressing on the lateral aspect looking for any bulging or feeling any effusion on the medial aspect or by the kneecap. The next part of the, of the evaluation is palpation. This can be most easily done with the knee in slight flexion, which can be facilitated by placing a pillow under the knee. Begin in the front of the knee by palpating the quadriceps muscle and tendon, and then proceed to the patella, including the superior and inferior aspects of the patella, the patellar tendon, the medial and lateral aspects of the patella, and the fat pads on either side of the patella tendon. Next, we will palpate the medial structures of the knee, starting with the medial collateral ligament that originates on the medial epicondyle of the femur and runs down onto the proximal aspect of the tibia. The pes anserine area is located approximately three centimeters below the medial joint line. On the lateral aspect, we will palpate the lateral collateral ligament as it originates on the femur and extends out down to the fibula. Next, move your hands behind the knee to feel for any fullness or mass in the popliteal fossa. And finally, palpate the bursa, where they lie on the prepatellar area, the infrapatellar area, and the pes anserine area. To assess range of motion, we will first have the patient put their leg in full extension, looking for any hyperextension, and then going to full flexion, Typically, the range of motion should be from 0 to 135 degrees. To test the patient's knee strength in the seated position, ask her to straighten her knee against your resistance and then bend her knee against your resistance. After you have completed palpation, proceed to special tests of the knee to evaluate the patellofemoral joint, the ligaments, and soft tissues. The knee will be in the extended position Initially, we'll begin with a patellar apprehension test to test for patellar dislocation. Putting pressure on the medial aspect of the patella and moving it laterally, look it to the patient to see if there's any signs of apprehension. The patellofemoral grind test assesses the patellofemoral joint surfaces. For this test, we press down on the patella and have the patient contract their quadriceps muscle, feeling for any crepitus or noting any pain. Next, assess the integrity of the anterior cruciate ligament. To perform the Lachman's test, flex the knee to 20 to 30 degrees, encourage the patient to relax their hamstring musculature, firmly grasp the femur with one hand, and with the other hand in the, behind the proximal tibia, firmly pull, displacing the tibia upon the femur, looking for the amount of anterior displacement and the firmness of the end point. It's always nice to compare it to the opposite knee and if you get increased displacement or a soft endpoint, this usually indicates an ACL injury. An alternate way to assess the integrity of the ACL in patients with larger legs is to perform the Lachman's test with your own leg underneath the femur, helping to stabilize the femur, and again putting your hands behind the proximal tibia, and again performing the Lachman's uh, with pulling forward firmly, looking for anterior displacement, and firmness of the endpoint. The anterior drawer test is another way to assess the integrity of the ACL. With the knee flexed at 90 degrees and sitting on the patient's foot for stabilization, place your fingers behind the proximal tibia and pull forward, 
assessing the amount of movement. The posterior drawer test is, is to assess the integrity of the PCL and is performed in the same position, now with pushing posteriorly upon the anterior aspect of the tibia, checking for the amount of posterior displacement of the tibia upon the femur. The posterior sag sign is also used to test for a PCL tear. Place both knees in 90 degrees of flexion and observe them laterally for posterior sagging of the tibia of the affected knee compared to the unaffected knee. After assessing the ACL and PCL, return the knee to the relaxed and extended position. Now we will assess the medial and lateral collateral ligaments. To assess the medial collateral ligament, we will perform the valgus stress test. In this test, we abduct the hip and flex the knee to approximately 30 degrees to remove the effect of the joint capsule on medial knee stability. With one hand cupped underneath the lateral aspect of the joint line and the other hand on the anterior aspect of the ankle, then with your distal hand, create a valgus stress on that medial compartment, assessing for the integrity of the ligament. To assess the lateral collateral ligament, we'll, we will perform the vera stress test. Again, abduct the hip and flex the knee to 30 degrees. With one hand medially and the other hand around the ankle on the posterior aspect, provide a varus stress on the knee and assess for ligament laxity compared to the other side. And finally, assessing for meniscal pathology, we want to palpate the medial and lateral joint lines in, with the knee at 90 degrees of flexion. Find the inferior aspect of the patella, then palpate across the medial joint line and the lateral joint line, assessing for any pain or tenderness.